So now we understand that our motivation for seeking truth must be pure and the diligence of our studies into the sacred science of the soul must be more than just a passing novelty. How do we find truth? Over the last 10 years, I can't count how many times I've been asked by those with an interest in the esoteric subjects how they can find the truth. What most really mean when they ask me this is, what can you show me to convince me that what you are saying is the truth. The fact is nobody can give anybody the truth. A teacher can point the way, but it is the student who must find the truth for themselves. Because if you are depending on others to tell you what truth is, then that will ensure it will always remain just a belief. To know, you must possess knowledge, and to possess knowledge, you must seek it out for yourself. But where can I find this elusive truth, you ask? My reply to this question has always been the same. You must go back to the most original and ancient material you can find, and you must continuously verify everything across all cultures, all mythologies, all philosophies, and all theologies. It is then you will find the core teachings and principles that keep repeating themselves. Manly P. Hall explains this process as such. The first step in the organisation of thought, therefore, is to reduce the complexity of knowledge to a more or less simple program and to discover from the whole philosophical literature of the race those parts which are of primary significance. He who uses this process will soon discover that beneath a vast and complex philosophical literature are a few basic principles. These principles once grasped, equip the mind to cope with any issue with at least a fair measure of true intelligence. Think of these core truths as being like a skeleton, and all the symbols, parables, legends and mythologies are the layers of flesh and muscle that cover the skeleton, and each of the body parts of the skeleton are different cultures or religions. So one arm may be Christianity, and the other arm may be Islam. The torso could be the Viking myths. The shoulder is Gnosticism, the back Hindu. The right leg could be Kabbalah, while the left leg is Hermetics, and so on. All those different layers of flesh and muscle, all the different parts of the body, are built upon the skeleton. It doesn't matter that the leg doesn't look the same as the arm, or the shoulder doesn't look the same as the torso. They are all still part of the same skeleton. Our mission as a seeker of truth is to find our way back to the skeleton. And we can do that by starting with an examination of the leg or the arm, perhaps the shoulder or the back. But wherever we start on the body to seek out truth, we must continue examining each body part until we have revealed the entire skeleton. Because just as there is only one skeleton, there is only one truth. As Paracelsus relayed, all numbers are multiples of one. All sciences converge to a common point. All wisdom comes out of one center and the number of wisdom is one. What the student must understand is that although on the outside the religions, myths and parables of each culture and religion may appear to be different, the truths they are relaying are still the same. Manly P. Hall revealed, All the great world religions, though divided by the superficial differences of their exoteric creeds, unite in their esoteric knowledge. It is this secret doctrine which all the faiths of the world share in common, that interests all sincere students of religion. The quest of essential wisdom is the great work of life. The Zohar explains it in this way. Doctrine are its cloak, the simple look only at the garment, that is, upon the narrative of the doctrine. More they know not. The instructed, however, See not merely the cloak, but what the cloak covers. And Origen, a 2nd century theologian, stated, 
The learned may penetrate into the significance of all Oriental mysteries, but the vulgar can only see the exterior symbol. It is allowed by all who have any knowledge of the scriptures that everything is conveyed enigmatically, i.e. esoterically. You have a God-gifted intellect for a reason, so you must trust in that above all else, above the words of the most esteemed modern author, the most intellectually impressive professor, or the most popular New Age guru. And even my words should not be given any weight until you, yourself, have verified and researched everything that I have relayed in these teachings. Let us revisit the allegory of the skeleton. When naming the different parts of the body after the cultural texts they represent, I purposely labelled the legs Hermetics and Kabbalah. This is because just as the legs can be seen as the foundation of the skeleton and body when it stands upright, we can view the seven universal principles within Hermetics in the same way. They are an excellent foundation in our search for truth for the student can weigh and measure all new information against these universal principles. For those who would like an overview of these seven hermetic principles, you may find my video covering this subject helpful. The link can be found in the description underneath this video. The Kabbalah Tree of Life is another important foundational tool the student can use to decode the language of symbolism and numerology especially when used in conjunction with the major arcana of the Rider Waite tarot cards. In my many years of study, I have found the archetypal symbols encoded on the Rider Waite tarot cards to be the most accurate, and they were created as a key to help the student unlock the uncultured information within the Kabbalah Tree of Life. Mr. Waite was clear the cards were never intended for the telling of fortunes. The true tarot is symbolism. It speaks no other language and offers no other signs. Another resource that has proven itself to be absolutely invaluable to a student in the pursuit of knowledge is the Colburn. The Colburn is a collection of Egyptian and Celtic manuscripts that date back 3,600 years. There have been many attempts to discredit these manuscripts, including Wikipedia removing the article about these scriptures in 2013. And many alternative researchers have used some allegorical stories from these manuscripts to push false teachings about Nibiru or have published them as a way to associate their names to them and relegate them to the realm of conspiracy and alien disinformation. But ignore these deflections. The texts themselves are all that a student needs to focus on, not who published them and who has connected themselves to them. On the search for truth, there are many snares and false paths the seeker of truth must be wary of. Some are put there by those who are naive and misinformed, and some are put there by those who have an intention to purposely mislead. This is why a student must return to the most ancient and original texts available and interpret the information using their own intellect and not just listen to somebody else interpret the texts for them. Using your own intellect and most importantly, trusting in it is the way a student can ensure they avoid the many false paths and snares along the way. Manly P. Hall relayed this lesson about a seeker trusting in their own intellect. Actually, nature wants us to solve our own problems. Nature doesn't want us to lean upon other people. Always try to solve as much of a problem yourself as is possible. Do not develop the leaning habit. The more we develop the habit of leaning, the weaker we become. We must realise that as a nation or a community develops leaners, it becomes weaker as a whole. Where the person tries to evade the need for personal decision, solution and responsibility, the result is always weakness. 
Although it is far more labour intensive to approach the seeking of truth in this way, it is the only way that a student can ensure they are accessing the material in its purest form and not just taking on the beliefs of another who may be interpreting them incorrectly. This teaching from the Colburn Bible warns of the pitfalls a student may leave themselves exposed to by placing their faith in somebody who appears to be intellectual, worldly or impressive. There are men satiated with worldly learning who have fallen into the pit dug by their own books. They are gorged and uncomfortable. Their diversity of opinions and thoughts confuses them. The study of the sacred scriptures is not for the curious. It is useless unless the student knows where he is heading, his destination, unless he has an end in view. Though the truth within the sacred scriptures is unalterable, can never change, the revelation can always be interpreted according to a man's progress. The hidden truths are to be made available to man whenever he is ready. The spiritual man who is truly awakened sees much more in the words than the commonplace man who may see no more than the letters and words. Yet words are a forest in which a man can easily lose his way. Fine sentences and a grand manner of expression may just be a lure and a covering for the pit and stake. There are those who talk about spiritual things, but do no more than weave a web of words to trap the unwary. To derive benefit from a bottle of physic, the contents must be taken. Merely reading the inscriptions will effect no cure. So now we understand that to be a student of this divine science, we should not view it as a curiosity or a novelty. We should approach all information from a neutral position and remove all our previous beliefs and opinions and allow the information to continually confirm itself before we accept it as a truth. And lastly, we should not discard any knowledge because of our feelings for a particular religion or culture imparting the knowledge because all knowledge originates from the same source. I will finish this video with some important advice from Manly P. Hall to any serious seeker of truth. The well-informed student of occultism is one of the most universally learned of human beings. He must be acquainted with all of the important systems of world philosophy and religion, both Eastern and Western, and he must have a thorough understanding of ancient sciences and arts. There is no place for the superficial thinker in this field, and should he wander in by accident, it would be wise for him to depart in haste.